All right, folks, good morning. It is a very bright and very beautiful early fall morning, and I want to share with you guys today what I got in my trailer. It's full of wholesale plants that I bought yesterday, didn't get home with them until late last night, and this morning I want to unpack them. I want to show you what I got, let you know how much I paid for them, and see if we can figure out what they're going to be worth going forward. You know, in the nursery business, that's something you're always trying to figure out is how much is something going to cost me and how much can I get for it, starting with your plant. So let's dive into this today and let's see what we can learn. Now it's worth mentioning that when you're transporting live plants, you know, on your own from a nursery or from wherever you get them back to your home or back to your nursery that they really need to be covered with some kind of tarp covering. And this is a shade cloth. And this is just standard in the nursery industry to transport plants covered with some sort of shade tarp. And it keeps them from becoming wind burned as you travel. You don't have to go far and you don't have to go fast for your plants, to, for the leaves on your plants to just get literally just burned off from the wind. It doesn't kill them, but it'll set them back and they're not gonna be ready as quickly as you wanted them to be. And I had to travel over 200 miles with these yesterday. I just don't have a nursery close to me we'll talk more about that lately so or later so sometimes i have to go a long way to get my plants and that's fine but anyway this is just standard to you know have these tarps on here like this and i just take a knife and cut all this off here and i've got some bungees that i'll pull off as well but this may not be all that interesting but it's also just kind of part of the deal in the nursery business all right i got all the bungees and all the strings off and i'm going to show y'all what's under here. You're gonna see some familiar plants and then you're gonna see some unfamiliar plants. I wanna go through them and I did this differently than I normally do. You know, normally I'm buying in small plugs to grow out and that kind of thing, but these are a little bit bigger, you know, kind of form of liner, or at least most of them are. These are all trade gallons with the exception of this very far back back here. And we'll talk about those in a minute too, but I wanna take a little bit of time to unload these, I've cleared out a spot over here in my irrigation area. I'm gonna unload all this, it's gonna take me a little while to do that, and then we will go from there. Just to show y'all this, this is all oak leaf hydrangeas back here to this point. And then we got our cypress in here and back here on the back, we've got our sweet bays. Just wanna show you how these plants are stacked in the trailer. This is why you can get hundreds of them. You could probably get a thousand trade gallon pots into this trailer. And I don't have that many here, but you know, you just lay them down on their sides and kind of tilt them over and stack them and you just start piling them up. So. That's how you're able to get a whole lot of plants into a small area. When it comes to moving wholesale plants around, man, it's unbelievable how many you can pack in here. I mean, look at this pot. Even though the pot's kind of crushed, you see that? It didn't make any difference at all. So, worth mentioning. All right, we got those unloaded. That proved to be a big job. And my papa used to say doing something like that, he'd say that's almost like work. And I'd say if he were out here with me today that that's probably what he would have said. But... Just to show you what I've got here, right here, these are Firepower Nandinas, and these are in three gallon pots, and that's bigger than what I normally buy. But anytime I'm buying something in a three gallon pot, you know, I'm buying it to resell it quickly. Now, I really bought these intending to sell them next spring, but I may even post these on my Facebook page, on my nursery page, and to see if I can do a quick flip on some of them. We'll see. I want to see how they look in a couple of days after the long ride in the truck yesterday and just make sure that they're not burned or anything. But I may try to sell some of these you know, almost immediately. This is a Sweet Bay Magnolia here, and this is kind of a, if you want to call it a compact growing magnolia tree, a uh, real common and real popular in the south where I live, but uh, just a really nice tree. And these are trade gallon in size. This one's just got two branches. Most of them have like two to six branches, something like that. But these are just really nice. And I will take all of these before next spring and pot these up into like trade two size pots. So basically a pot that's twice that size. So, you know, something that something that's that's kind of a good rule of thumb that I think of is, you know, when you're potting up a plant into the next size pot, it's good 
to at least double the pot size if you can. You know, don't go from a trade gallon to a true gallon. That's just, first of all, it's really hard. Physically, it's hard to do it. There's just not much room for new potting soil in there, but it just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't really add a lot to what you're doing. So, you know, try to double the pot size. If you've got a plant in a quart size pot, you know, get that into at least a trade gallon pot, you know, something like that. So um, another plant that I bought is these uh, gold thread cypress. These are sometimes called gold mops, but this is just a little, a little shrub and these need to be potted up, fertilized, and these are going to need to grow a little bit. But, you know, by late spring to early summer, these will be ready to go next year. Same for the Sweet Bay Magnolias. And up here towards the front, there's 200 of these and these are all oak leaf hydrangeas and they're all the same variety and you may think what in the world you do that for but so here's the here's the deal guys this is a snow queen oak leaf hydrangea beautiful hydrangea trade gallon pot all these are trade gallons all 200 of them and these are going to be spectacular next year so before we talk about the economics of all of this let's let me just show you something on this now this is one in a trade gallon pot just showed you this and it was this size, this plant, this hydrangea, was this size last year. So in one growing season, you go from this to this. And, you know, this is a $25, $30 plant all day long, and this thing will be incredible looking next year. It's actually really nice now, but it's got a little bit of a room left to grow in this pot. So, you know, next year we'll be selling a lot of these, and then we'll be hanging on to these to grow them out even bigger for the year after that. Which brings us to what does all of this cost and how much do we think or do I think that I'm going to be able to make off of all of this? All right, now this is kind of a different look at wholesale than I've given you guys before. You know, normally my wholesale plants that I buy are little small plugs that are going to require, you know, a long time to grow out. And, you know, it all kind of depends on what your end goal with your plants is, you know, depending on what size of wholesale plants you might buy. So let me just give you a couple of uh, thoughts here on what I've done, what I've bought, and what I intend to do with them. Now that one down on the end, this is the Firepower Nandina. It's a spectacular foliage plant, evergreen. In the fall, it turns bright red, and it's really just an awesome kind of foundational staple plant, at least where I live. And I paid $10 each for these three gallon Nandina Firepowers. Now my sale price on those would be about $20. So basically to double my money. But my thought on that is typically when I buy something in a three gallon pot, I'm not intended on ever potting that up bigger. I wanna sell it quickly. So I don't mind having a smaller margin on something that I'm not intending to keep long. Now that may be a little bit of an exception here on this because my intention really is to sell these next spring. But you know, now that I see them and they look really nice right now, I may try to go ahead and sell them quickly this fall. So, you know, if you can, even if I can just sell a few of them, I bought 30 of them, but if I can just sell 10 or 20 of them quickly, you know, I'd go ahead and start recouping some of my investment that I paid for all of these just by selling some of those. So we'll see about that. But, you know, I think of it as the longer I'm going to keep a plant or the longer it takes to grow a plant, you know, the, the higher I want its margin to be when I ultimately sell it. So that's the Nandina. This one is a gold mop cypress or a gold thread cypress, just kind of a low growing shrub that very slow growing. You know, eventually with time, these will get, you know, three, four, five plus feet tall, but they're very, very, very slow growing. But that golden color, you know, people really love those. And this is another foundational shrub type plant to have in a nursery. But what I'm going to do with these is pot these into trade twos, which is about twice this size. And it'll grow slowly, but by late next spring into early next summer, you know, my hope is that this would look just about that, have that really nice gold color, and be ready to sell that for about $10 each. So these smaller plants here in these trade, trade gallon pots, I paid $3 each for them at the wholesale nursery yesterday. So I have $3 in that, and I could a little better than triple that in less than one year's time. So that's a really good addition to my nursery if all goes well there. And about the same thing with the Sweet Bay Magnolia. Now, the Sweet Bay is really more of a tree. It's kind of a thick, bushy tree, kind of a smaller magnolia, but it's still, you know, grow to 20 feet or so tall with time. And it's just a really nice tree that somebody would have in their yard. So what am I going to do with these? I'm also going to take these out of these pots, pot them up into trade twos, and probably sell these for $15 next spring. Now, 
I just think if they fill out really nice and they look nice in their pots and it's something that's marketed more of as a tree and it's, you know, it's going to get really tall and it'll look tall in a trade two pot, I don't see any trouble at all getting $15 each for these next spring and paying three dollars each for them you know that's a 5x on your money in less than a year well that's pretty good so i'd be happy to do that and you know any of these that don't sell next spring you know we can just keep them and pot them up if we need to or you know just continue to try to sell them through next summer even into next fall so really nice plants and don't mind keeping them a bit and finally i wanted to show you this one and this is one i want to spend a little bit of time talking about and this is again an oak leaf hydrangea called snow queen just a really pretty you know partial sun you know it grows pretty good size really prolific white bloomer and i have a couple of things that i'm going to do with these now if it were you know may if today were may the first just say right in the middle of spring selling season i would just go sit that out in my cell and sell that for ten dollars today bought it for three could sell it for ten great margin and there's no way that plants at this size at that price would sit for very long nobody can get an oak leaf hydrangea anywhere as far as i know for ten dollars even in a trade gallon pot you just don't see them in trade gallon pots for one thing but people love these plants and they sell really well so what i'm going to do with these is i need to get these into trade two pots and i've got 200 of them bought 200 of them for three dollars each so six hundred dollars i spent on that pile of hydrangeas out there but next year my intention is to sell about 100 of these next season so if i could sell 100 of these next year i would take that that money and about five exit on those and the rest of them i'm going to keep them and grow them out even more for the next year and i shared with you guys last time that you know in about two years probably a year and a half from now or maybe a year and 10 months from now just kind of depending on time of the year we're going to have a massive like north alabama hydrangea sale like i mean this would be a huge deal where we're trying to sell thousands of hydrangeas in just one weekend you know the north alabama hydrangea bonanza i really like that name just kind of almost like a hydrangea festival out here for people to come and you know have 20 30 40 varieties of hydrangeas at great prices for people to come and absolutely load their cars and trucks up with and go crazy buying them and i think this snow queen is going to be a, be a really important part of that day so we'll have some of these these by then these will be gigantic by then and somebody comes and sees they can get it for 20 or 25 dollars normally it'd be 40 50 or 60 dollars at your normal nurseries then i think people are just going to be so thrilled about it so that's our plans for these sell some next season and then sell even more of them that'll be huge the next year so that's what we're looking at on these all right, folks, pardon the crude setup, but it is what it is. And I wanted to just show you how much I paid for these plants and how much we can expect to potentially make from them one plant at a time. So this is the Gold Thread Cypress, 50 of them at $3 each, total purchase price of $150. Next year, if we sell them all for $10 each, that'd be $500 total with the profit off of those of being $350. Of course, you have to figure the price of the pot, the potting soil, and the fertilizer into that. But I'm just showing you this just as an exercise in just kind of how the numbers can work. The Sweet Bay Magnolias, those cost $150 total. I think we can sell those for $15 each for a total profit of $600 on those. The Nandina Firepowers, Bought those 30 at $10 each for a total of $300. I think we can double our money on those and make $300. And then the oak leaf hydrangeas, which I think are really the interesting ones in the group. I bought 200 of them for a total of $600. I think in the first year we can sell them, which is just selling them year one, so next year. I think we can sell them at $15 each, 100 of them, for $1,500. So by this time next year... We will have made about $1,200 profit on the oak leaf hydrangeas, but then there's still a hundred of those left that I'm going to save back for the following year. And I think the following year we'll be able to get $25 each for that 100 for a total of about $2,500 profit on those 100. So the total purchase price of all of these plants was $1,200, and the total profit on them by year two would be about $4,950.
You know, and an interesting thing too about the nursery business is those numbers that I just showed you, they say nothing about the fact that I'll be able to take cuttings off of these plants and, you know, I may take cuttings off some and not the other. I mean, the cypress, they take forever to root, but, you know, and I don't even know how you begin to figure that into the return on investment on these three, four, five years down the road when maybe you've made a thousand plants off of these same plants that you don't have any money in. So just another part of it to consider. Now, the load that I've showed you today is just one load and one example of buying wholesale plants to either grow out and sell or to sell immediately and how the math might work out on that. But, but listen, let's don't be delusional about this. Listen, here's part of the thing that you got to understand about plants, especially this is early October, so we're going into fall and winter's right around the corner. Uh, something you got to understand about plants is there are plants that will die. Some of these plants that I've showed you today, some of these nandinas, the cypress, the gold mops, and look, all the plants you can see all around me, whether I bought them today or not, some of these plants out here are going to die. They're just not going to be alive next spring. And you know, we don't know why that happens. Some things just don't overwinter great. All these that I have bought late uh, late in the season here, early in the fall, these should all winter just fine. And that's one of the things I've tried to do with plants is try to kind of hone in on the ones that I know overwinter really well. But some plants just don't. And, you know, the math never works out perfectly. No matter how high you think your margin's gonna be when you buy this plant and keep it for a while, you know, some of your plants are probably just not going to do well for whatever reason. And that's just part of having a nursery. It's part of growing living things is that from time to time, living things just die. Sometimes you know why. Sometimes you neglected them. Sometimes you overwatered them. Sometimes you underwatered them. Sometimes bugs get in them. Mice get in them. And sometimes you don't know why they died. Maybe the winter was particularly harsh or you didn't have any winter until April and then you had a hard freeze or... Whatever it is, things happen, and I understand that. I just wanted to show you the numbers on these, just to show you kind of like, okay, ideally and perfectly, this is how it would work out, but I say that knowing that it won't work out perfectly like that. You might have a 10% loss. You might have a 20% loss. On the flip side, sometimes things go better than you thought they might, but just understand there's always some fluctuation. You always have highs and you always have some lows when it comes to dealing with plants, and all of that is just part of having a nursery. So that's it for today's video, guys. I sure as the world hope this has been helpful to some of you. And I appreciate you watching. I love y'all. And I'll see you on the next one.